Hi everyone, I hope you're well. So welcome back to the channel. Those of you that follow me will know that I recently uh, purchased an EQ8R Pro and I've had a few nights now using the uh, mount and uh, getting to grips with it, learning about its good and bad points. And I wanted to share them with you just in case you're considering buying one of these mounts too. So let's get into it. My name's Glenn, you're watching Astro Bloke. So first up, I don't want to go into too many technical details about the mount because I've done as kind of an introduction on my last video. But um, I wanted to talk to you about the connections on the mount because I know there's a bit of controversy over this. Um, it says it's got through the mount cabling and I know that there's a lot of uh, uh, forums where people are discussing that they've not been able to get their cameras to be detected. And I had exactly the same problem with this. And the only way I could get around it was to actually run a wire all the way up to my Pegasus uh, Powerbox Advance, which then the camera would be detected by. Now I want to give a shout out to Martin of Martin's Astrophotography. Um, I contacted him because he said that he has his camera working through his EQ8R Pro. And I just wanted to see whether he was a newer version of mine or how he got it working and Martin shared uh, basically how he's got it connected. And it's uh, all down to the length of USB cables, basically the USB 3. So, oh, the wind's a bit, bit strong today. Um, so basically what I've got is a USB 2 um, extension cable that runs from my PC, and I'm just gonna angle you down for a second. So what I've got is my PC down there and there's a USB extension cable which is a USB 2 and it runs to the bottom of my pier, up through the middle of my pier and then uh, it literally can, just comes out the top here. Into that I've got a short uh, USB uh, 3 lead which is no more than half a metre and then that plugs into that and straight into the mount. Now if you're using a short USB 3 lead, it doesn't seem to have the issues. So if you look up here, I've got the, uh, I'm using the power out here to power my Pegasus power box. And then I'm actually just running power to the other things from the box because it's there. I could run the, uh, the other power leads out, one to the camera and one to the automatic focuser, but it, it, it really doesn't matter. Um, this is the USB into the Pegasus power box and this is the USB that goes to the camera. Um, you've got your power in here as well. And then I've got a USB-C that runs up to my off-axis guider, which is the 290mm. And then I've got a USB-B, which is a USB-2, and that runs to my electronic filter wheel. So that's everything connected on the, on the mount, and it all works really well. Um, I don't have any problems. The camera gets detected. Um, but if I initially, the way I used to run my rig was here, I had a long USB 3 to my PC and that just would not detect the camera no matter what I did. But now that I've got a short USB 3 and then I use a USB 2 extender cable to that, everything works great. And uh, the power in's good as well, the power through works perfectly. You'll see on the mount I've got the auto guide uh, light there flashing three times. That's because I've got a pet curve now loaded into the mount, which is enabled. So the guiding on the mount has actually been brilliant. When I first plugged it in, it was running at basically 0.6. Um, that was without me doing any tweaks at all, really. Um, and then what I found with most nights, if the scene was quite good, 0.5, 0.4 sometimes, everything was running quite nicely. So I wanted to obviously get that better. So I did things like guide assistant, etc. And it actually showed that the mount had a fair bit of backlash, but I'll talk about that in a moment. What I really wanted to do 
was get a really nice pet curve and I was struggling. Um, so let's say EQ Mod does a great job, records the pec, um, and you can do it over a number of cycles. But where I was struggling was I was going into EQ Mod's pec prep to try and smooth out the curve. And I'll be honest with you, I found the whole thing just a bit of a headache to work its way through. Um, there was a lot of stuff to read and everything else. So um, I kind of stepped away from it and looked at other things. And I was talking to my friend Joe, uh, Joe Navara, and he was telling me about PenPro. So um, I looked at PenPro, and yes, you have to buy it. It's about 148 pounds, um, but it looked like a really good program. And there's a trial period. There's a 60 day trial period. So I thought I'd give it a go. And it's a really excellent program. So it takes over the guiding of your um, scope and it will do all the plotting for say five cycles. Then what you can do is then PenPro will analyze the cycles it's done and take an average and actually build you a smooth pet curve, which you can load straight into EQ Mod, and then load it straight into your mount. And that's been brilliant. And let me show you some of my guiding after I did this. So, um, as you can see here, I've got the mount guiding at low 0.3. Now, this is brilliant. I This is exactly what I wanted, basically a mount that will guide uh, really, really nicely without any, you know, without me having to worry too much about stuff. It's handling the CT-10 perfectly. One of the big reasons why I wanted the EQ-8R Pro was because of the CT-10 being such a big scope. Um, it was pushing the EQ-6R Pro the EQ6R Pro did guide it, um, but you could tell it was on the limit because a lot of the time my guiding was 0 0.6, 0 0.7. Sometimes it would even jump a little bit higher. But one of the biggest problems I was having was if you had a breezy day, a bit like today, it would muck the subs up without a doubt. So if you were doing like a 10 minute sub and you had a little, little bit of a gust, that sub would be gone because it, the EQ6 just couldn't hold it firmly enough. Now the EQ8, doesn't seem to have an issue at all. Um, even with a bit of a gust, it, it doesn't upset it. So I'm really pleased with that. It's done exactly what I wanted it to do. Um, the operation of the mount is fantastic. Uh, everything's worked without any issues at all. Um, PhD2 did um, report that I had quite a bit of backlash, uh, but it hasn't affected my guiding. So I don't know how accurate that is. So there is a backlash feature in PenPro. So I'm going to be doing a separate video on uh, how I did the curve on the mount and loaded it up and I'm also going to have a look at the backlash feature as well so that'll be a follow-up video um, after this so uh, keep your eyes open and maybe uh, it could be something that you could use too. Are there any disadvantages to the mount? Only in the fact that it's not very easily a portable mount. I mean, it comes with a tripe here. It can be used portably. And I know Luke from uh, Luca Matico does that, you know, and hats off to him because uh, he's, you know, it takes a, takes a, a bit of strength to uh, pick the whole thing up and move it about the way he does. Um, if you've got an observatory though with a pier, brilliant. Uh, it's ideal for that, um, but it can be used portably. And who knows, maybe if I go to um, a star party and I'm gonna be there for a week or something, I may take it with me, I'll, uh, I'll see. I'll have to uh, dis decide how strong I'm feeling that day. The mount does not come with a polar scope, although you can have one added. So you would need something like an iPolar or a Pole Master, or you can use the programs that are available. So you've got SharpCap, uh, which is a licensed uh, program, but Nina has got the uh, three-point polar alignment routine in there, which is free, and that works extremely well too. I'm gonna to show you a little demonstration of its slewing, so you can hear it. Uh, it's a very nice sounding mount. Um, and also, I've got a, a right funny little setup here, which I would love to show you. My observatory is very small, uh, which a lot of you might already know, but I can slew to my flats uh, without removing the roof, which uh, surprised me that I could manage it, and it's quite funny to watch, so uh, I'm just going to show you that.
All that remains is, would I recommend this mount? Well, yes, wholeheartedly, it's fantastic. If you're in the market for a bigger mount or an observatory class mount, you can't go far wrong with an EQ8R Pro. Um, it performs at the levels I was hoping it would, so I've got no complaints there, and at the end of the day, that's what its purpose is for, is to get you good guiding, um, and for its weight carrying capacity, it, it's a strong mount. It uh, chucks this thing, this scope around like it's a twig, which uh, is more than I could have asked for. Um, the build quality is superb. I really do like the finish on this mount, all the way down to the, you know, the same, the sort of Skywatcher green anodized knobs. Um, everything works as it should. Um, obviously there was the slight anomaly with the cabling, uh, the through mount cabling, but uh, as long as you use the right cables, it works. Well, it does on my mount anyway. Um, if you've got any questions or you'd like to know some more details or I have not covered something fully enough for you, please let me know in the comment section below. I'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions. Please also, if you've liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Um, I'll be bringing out a lot more content. I'd also like to say thank you to all of you for subscribing and a special thanks to my channel members. Um, I will be putting up some more data soon for you to download. At the moment, I've put M106 up, so please feel free to download that data and have a play. If you do do that and you uh, have an image, please share it with me because I love to see what you can come up with. Okay, well that's enough of me chatting. So until next time, please take care and I wish you all clear skies.